before I got the boat out, I just thought I'd do a bit of a roundup really at the end of the hull. I've had some great sport catching the bass, mackerel. We got the conga, we did the conga juggling when I got that in the creel. We've had the lobster in the creel, we've had a spider crab in the creel. Uh, we've had those bull huffs, they were really good too. I think the sea bream is going to be um, another story, one that's unfinished. I've spoken to people and they've said um, without ragworm you're very unlikely to catch uh, the sea bream. Now I asked where can you get the ragworm and you can't actually dig for ragworm on the beaches around here so in future maybe need to arrange for bait to be posted to the holiday accommodation. So in terms of bait I've been using the prawn pot that uh, Douglas provided me, Douglas from Piscator UK. So that's been really good to, uh, to get some prawns and use those. I've also been able to feather up a few mackerel uh, that I've used for bait. I've also eaten a few, which were really nice. So the bait bill has actually been free. I've managed to get the bait I needed that was here. Yeah, the weather. It's, it's lovely and sunny, but we've had this constant easterly and it has made a difference to where I can get to fish. I did try to get out to the wreck that I'd fished last year and it was just too choppy, so stay safe. We've stayed inside, but we still had some good sport. I just want to say a huge thanks again to the marina for allowing me to, to use this berth. It's been very busy over on Pontoon E, the visitors pontoon, and I think it would have been quite hard for finding a space, rafting up. Having this is here for real time has been absolutely perfect. I'm also in good company and I've put a bit of a vid clip in now. Um, there are at least three other Orkney coastliners um, within the, the marina here. So uh, it just shows what a good little boat it is. So I don't know if you can see that, there's a little Orkney 440, that's the newer version of the coastliner, just being slipped in the water there. Freedom is also an Orkney coastliner and little Bridget here is also a coastliner. Pretty popular little boat. So real time Freedom and Bridget, I don't see a name on the other one. And I don't think I could have asked more of real time. She's been a good little boat this holiday, looked after me, been economic. She's done everything I asked of her. Um, perfect little boat, I love it. And I admit I'm 100% biased towards these little Orkney coastliners. So you might be interested in a bit about um, costs and what things have cost. So in terms of actually towing the boat down here, I really don't think it makes much difference. It swings and roundabouts. You either burn more fuel in the car driving nearer to 70 on the motorway and your carriageways. You can save some money towing at 60. You know, it's kind of swings and roundabouts. The car's more economic at 60 and with the little boat behind it, it really doesn't make a great deal of difference. And that's a cost you're gonna to have to pay anyway to get down here. Marina Berth here. I've paid 189 I think it was, for, for the two weeks. And yeah, it sounds quite a lot, but it's really, really convenient to have the boat just here. And uh, fingers crossed the marina team will be able to let me do this again next year. And yeah, there is a next year. I'm coming again. The other thing they've been spending on, obviously, is the petrol, E5 petrol. The little outboard, the 20 horsepower, has been very, very economic and I don't think I've spent more than £55 uh, in topping up with fuel. Uh, we're just about empty now, which is ideal for going home with empty tanks. So what about next year when I come back? What would I do different? Um, I'd try and avoid that bank holiday traffic. Although you're going to get traffic any time, it's not just bank holiday. I think um, I need to bring some heavier plastic lures to get down to the pollock. I think I'd definitely bring some six pound line um, that I use for coarse fishing. Um, some small hooks and I would have um, maybe a waggler float from my coarse fishing box because I'd really like to have a go at catching these thick lit mullet that are in here. You see them underneath the boat. 
Uh, they go for the bread. I haven't managed to get them on the feed just yet, but we'll do that. We'll do that, that's unfinished business. I think each year I'm building my knowledge. This is the fourth year I've been down here and I'm getting to know marks. I'm finding my own marks and, and doing the research. And I'm getting to places and being able to be a little bit more predictable about catching fish. And that has really worked out well this time for finding the bass, finding the bullhuss, uh, going out and having a better idea of where I might find things. This year has been the first year I've brought the GoPro along and been YouTubing and it's been great to have you along. I hope you've enjoyed it, uh, seen some of the scenery here, seen some of the action. So uh, be glad to have you along again in future. Thank you so much for all the supportive comments. Uh, it really does mean a lot when you're actually putting some videos together. So birthday 13, that's been real times home for the fortnight lovely job thanks Myla Marina hi there so it's Thursday morning end of the trip so it's time to get the boat out and as you can probably hear uh, the wind is giving it some real hammer now it's definitely picked up to that 30 plus mile an hour so time to get the boat out um, I'm gonna just take you through what I do when I take the boat out very quickly uh, first thing we've got to do is take that lighting board off because we're going to get everything prepared in the car park here. I've got here nice and early so I've got plenty of space. It's high water so we've got plenty of water on the slipway. So I'm not sure if the GoPro will pick this up but you can see here a step at the end of the slipway. So you need to make sure that your trailer wheels don't go over the edge of that. So that's what causes the issue if you're trying to launch at very low tides. What you really want is for the water to be much higher up the pontoon here. Then you know you've got a safe way down on the slipway. This is not a bad slipway because it's quite clear. If it's green, then the car wheels slip very quickly. So I'm gonna sort out the trailer, make sure that's ready to go. And I'm gonna walk around, get the boat off the pontoon that we've been on all week. I'm going to bring it onto the slipway pontoon and then we'll back the car down here and uh, we'll get the boat out. As you can see, plenty of water in here at the minute. So I'm going to be bringing the boat onto this pontoon here. Uh, we'll back the trailer down here. So I've got the light board off and uh, just walking over to the boat now, fetch the boat over. So I don't know if you can hear the wind, but it's really whistling down. Also, when I was looking at the video uh, that I did the other day uh, of the roundup, I forgot to mention the thornback. The best fish I had, the PB, <laughs> the thornback. Don't forget the thornback. Right, let's get this boat round to the other pontoon and uh, Let's see how the wind plays, whether it's going to work in our favour and push me onto the trailer or it's going to fight me. Oh well, let's see how we get on. <laughs> yeah, check this out. Bigger boats than mine bobbing about. I'm glad I'm going in today. Okay, so we're back on the pontoon here. Um, they never put any cleats on here and I think that's to stop you mooring up. It's just for getting in and out. So this is the bit you'll like. This is when I get to reverse the car down from trailer. Always good fun.
the important bit here is that bottom roller. Once you can get the front of the boat onto that roller and your winch, you can start winching it up and those two things there, the sliders, will help centre the boat. That's the theory. So uh, I get the rear wheel just in the water there. The is perfectly aligned there just to for that back roller. So we need to get this piece of the boat, the front here, onto that roller and she'll self-center. I put the engine up on tilt because we don't want that dragging as we go up the slipway. Okay, so just a quick check under there and I'll have another little look as I get her up the slipway and make sure she's absolutely fine. Uh, wind straps on here, the blue one, but we also have this, which is another safety strap, a safety hook. Put that the other way around. Um, now, the plan here is that should that strap break, your boat's not gonna fly off the back as you go up the uh, slipway. And I've seen these winches the gears suddenly slip and the boat comes off the trailer not what you want so remember i've got the engine on tilt so we should be good at the moment. so just chop, stopped at the top of the slipway to make sure that the boat is properly in line with all the rollers the reason why this here is loose okay is because um if you have these both too tight it's very difficult to slip the boat on and off the trailer. They tend to stick rather than taking the weight on the keel over here on the rollers. I've got my straps on. Um, when you're putting these on, mind you don't winch them up so tight, you could break the boat. These are five ton straps and the boat's only about 200 kilo, so it ain't going anywhere. Yeah, the other thing I do is take the little bung out and just let any water out whilst I'm on the slipway here and uh, that just means that we drain that out although there's one other vehicle here we're not blocking the slip at all but if this was busy just get yourself away from the slip let other people use the slipway so apologies if it's a bit of a bouncy uh, video today but um, you just have to work quick and uh, doing a video all as a one-man band is uh, a bit of fun. I'm heading over to the other slipway because there's a, uh, a hose pipe there and I'll show you flushing the engine out. We just want to get all the salt water out of the internals of the engine. Make sure that's fresh. Uh, it's going to be a few days before I get back up to Aberdeenshire to do a proper clean on the boat. But uh, I've got a little motto and it's look after your outboard and it'll look after you. So we're going to give that a good wash off, stop all that salt water corrosion on it or prevent as much as we can. So there you go, boat on the trailer. It's not too hard. Uh, wind was a bit fun today. It did push it around a little bit, but once we got the boat up a bit on the trailer and started winching, I think you'll see she centered up okay and uh, that's been fine. So uh, these are what you call engine muffs. They've just got these two bits here. What we're gonna do now is put those on the, uh, the vents and if you can see those just here, and we're gonna inject some fresh water in there. So this is what happens, you connect it here, you see we've got plenty of water coming out of here. That's fresh water now, which is really good. Makes a bit of a row. The uh, last job I tend to do is see if they've got a hose pipe like this, if you can get the trailer hosed off 
and the outside of that engine, particularly around the back of the wheels where the bearings are and everything, give them a good hose off and the, uh, the rollers and stuff just helps to minimize corrosion. So that's me, boat on trailer, all cleaned up, engine flushed. Uh, just got to put the light board on now, do that in the other car park where there's a bit more space. Uh, and that's us set to go, so again, thanks for coming along, thanks for uh, joining me on the journey, I've really enjoyed having you aboard. There'll be plenty more activity uh, as the year goes on, plenty planned, keep an eye on the channel and uh, that's it. So um, bye from me, tailwag from D. okay. I don't think you're going to want to join me on the journey all the way to Scotland, so we'll cut it here. Yeah, definitely the right move to get the boat out.